The problem with databases is they store data. And what do I mean by that? They store just enough data. If I'm booking meetings, like booking a meeting room, if I have three meetings to book, I'll put three rows into my meetings table. I'm not going to put 30 rows into my meetings table if I've only got three meetings. But of course, what I actually want to see in my applications is something like this. I actually want the whole month with just those rows sort of filling in the blanks. So if I was to do that as a query, I'd actually want something like this. I want 31 days with just the blanks filled in. So I need a 31 row table to use that. But what if I want to see a yearly view? What if I want a 10 year view? The number of rows is arbitrary. So I can't go populate my meetings table with a billion rows just in case. That's not intelligent. So I need to be able to generate any number of rows. It's actually pretty easy to do. This is the syntax we use. Select levels, give it an alias if you like, from dual, connect by level less than 10. It's not actually a row generation facility. It's actually the hierarchical syntax in Oracle SQL. But what we're actually saying is gener generate a hierarchy where I start at one and the definition to loop around is simply to go one level up in the hierarchy. So there's no actual terminating clause except till I get 10 levels deep in this fictitious hierarchy. So using 10 will get me 10 rows. The cool thing is when you do select from dual like that, we have an optimization in the database called fast dual. We don't actually even read the dual table, which is actually a physical table. We use a memory structure which simulates it. So as you can see, there's absolutely a zero I.O. cost to do that query. All you're doing is burning CPU to arbitrarily spit out those rows. So it's effectively free. You consume some CPU, but you're not going to slam your I.O. subsystem in any way, shape or form. And you're not going to pollute the buffer cache. It's effectively just coming straight to you. Take a little bit of care with extremes. If I do less than, say, a trillion rows, you get a memory error. Because don't forget, we are actually fooling the database. We're actually using a hierarchy structure. So the database is going, I'll get you 10 trillion rows down of that hierarchy, but you may want to navigate your way back up again, because that's what hierarchies are for. So it's remembering stuff as we go, and you might have some problems. So the way to work around that, just limit it yourself to, say, a million or 10,000, and just do Cartesian joins. And then you can generate any number of rows you want. If I can generate any number of integers I want, I can generate any number of dates I want. So going back to our meetings problem, I'm simply giving a starting point and then connect by level and add the level because adding integers to dates adds a day. And that gives me the 1st of May up to the 31st of May because I went to the 31 days. So there I have my 31 day table generated on the fly for essentially no cost. So just a simple add a join back to my meetings table and there's the data as I wanted it before, using my three rows from my meetings table, in fact, I didn't fill them all in, plus the 31 days that I synthetically generated. A really easy way of padding out data for minimal cost.